Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games, back with another cool arcade repair video for you today. Now, if you didn't see the first one that we did of this, we are fixing this for our buddy Mike. This old school Nintendo red tent table type cocktail arcade game. If you don't know about these, there's a monitor on both sides and uh, you can play two different games on them. Very cool, very iconic Nintendo stuff. So our buddy Mike brought this to us. It's got some issues. So in our first video, we tested everything. We just tried to figure out exactly what's going on. So exactly what's going on is the board is not sending a signal out to one side. And the monitor on this side has been rebuilt but doesn't work and throws sparks all over the place. And the monitor on this side works but it's kind of meh. <laughs> it doesn't look that good. So it needs a cap kit. So in this video, we're going to mess with some monitors. What do you think about that? It's missing some uh, little coin bezels here, stuff like that too. I don't know what Mike plans on doing with that. He might already have that stuff, but we'll see. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take out this monitor. This is a Sharp XM1801 monitor, two of them. This one is working, it just needs a cap kit, so we're going to take it out and uh, check out the caps and uh, see if we can get it fixed. It's not bolted in. Mike kept the uh, bolts because he transported it without the monitors in it. And uh, we've got it just kind of mocked up sitting in there, but we're going to pop it back out, unplug everything, and uh, put it on the bench and see what we can do in the way of a cap kit. So let me pull it out of there for you. So I've popped it out and put it on the bench here. You have to unplug an audio connection. There's a video connection on the other side. You have to unplug the power from the transformer. Do not plug this into the wall. It will blow up the monitor. Joey, should they plug this into the wall? No. Why not? They'll blow up the monitor. You heard them. This plugs into the speaker. So on these, on the red tents, the audio is actually amplified by the monitor. Which is kind of a decent idea because you've got voltages up here. Why not use that to amplify the monitor, right? But the uh, the problem is, is if the monitor doesn't work, the audio doesn't work either. So you, you can't play it blind. So it's, sometimes it's hard to tell what the problem is because you can't hear the game playing without the monitor working. And you can't see the game playing without the monitor working. But anyway, um, let me show you what the thing looked like last night. So that's what it looked like last night, and we're going to cap it and get it looking a little better. By the way, it was collapsed, and then it popped back into place, so it's got some loose solder joints or something on the caps. You'll see here in a minute that they're all uh, ancient. So we've been working on them for a long time, so to be honest with you, a lot of times we don't even discharge them, but we know you're not supposed to say that. Joey, when was the last time you discharged a monitor? He can't even remember. But here's how you do it. You put a big clip on the ground. If I can even get it to work. We've got a clip attached to a screwdriver. You can put the clip on the ground. So you say, well, why don't you discharge the monitors? It's because usually they don't have any juice in them. And if you're careful, you don't get bit. Or if you do, it ain't the end of the world. So I'm going to slide the screwdriver underneath the anode cup which is going to make a big, horrible spark. How loud is it going to be, Joey? Not that loud. It's not going to be that loud. So I'm basically shorting the high voltage that's stored inside the tube into the ground with through this wire, right? But what's really going to happen is I don't think it's going to do anything. Nothing. Why didn't it, do, why didn't it make any noise, Joe? Itself. It discharged itself, and now you know why we don't usually discharge them, because it's a waste of time on a lot of them. Now, that's us. That's our opinion. You shouldn't do that. Tell them, Joe, what should they do? Discharge it. Definitely discharge it, okay? I don't want anybody getting hurt. It'll make your fingers tingle. Def definitely discharge it. Um, but a lot of times, to be honest, it'll, it'll discharge itself, so... Doesn't hurt to check though. People act like you're going to get killed if the damn thing zaps you. 
we get zapped all the time. It's not gonna kill you. How's it going, man? Doing good. I think he's got some stuff he wants to sell you, Jim. All right, so basically, uh, we're gonna try to get this board out of here. This thing looks complex. I haven't worked on one of these red tent ones in a while, so I'll take the, uh, the back off and we'll see how much of this we can get off of the actual chassis. All right, folks, so the way this frame is made, there's actually a plate on the bottom that comes completely off that allows you to get to the bottom of the board and you can get to pretty much everything on it. So I think we're going to try that instead of trying to take it all the way out of the frame. Um, but uh, this thing, I don't believe, has ever had a cap kit. I was looking at it last night and the only cap I was able to see the bottom of was on the neck here. And that one has been replaced. You can see the solder and even the flux around the the the, um, the solder. But ironically, that's the only one. The only one I could see was the only one that had been done. If you look at these, those haven't been replaced. You know, so I don't think this thing is. There's a couple more. I don't think this thing has ever had a cap kit. So it was still working from 1985 or whenever. Yay, Sharp Electronics. <laughs> um. So what we're, what our whole thing is, when the capacitors get old, they dry out, and they uh, it makes voltages change. So things start not working right. So you saw last night how the the thing was uh, collapsing and then coming back up. Usually that's because you've got bad solder on a cap or or a, a resistor or something. Um, usually a cap kit and touching up any bad solder you find will fix stuff like that. Looks like maybe that one's been replaced. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. But uh, we're going to go through, and by hand, we're just going to pull out each cap and uh, put a brand new one in it. That's the same, uh, that's the same uh, uh, value. And so uh, once we do that, hopefully we'll have a much better picture. And then that other one's going to be a little harder because it's completely screwed up. But I'll start popping them out and show you what, what was in there and what we're putting back in and all of that. These are all the old caps I've pulled out. Some of them were the wrong value, but uh, just for voltage. So like this one was a 10 UF. Microfarad? 10 UF 450 volt, but it's supposed to be a 10 UF 25 volt. Talking about overkill, but it'll work. But these were the old ones. So somebody had done a cap kit at some point. Um... So, but I think it was a long time ago. All of these small ones had never been replaced. So when they did their cap kit, they didn't bother with anything tiny. Which is a mistake. Because sometimes the tiny ones will bite you on the butt if you don't replace them. So, we swapped every one. Now, only electrolytics though. Oh, we didn't swap every one. Some of the big power ones I didn't do. Because they don't, you know, cap kit usually you don't do them. So, where can you get a cap kit? We just keep caps on hand, but you can uh, you can order kits that are already made. A couple places you can get them from Arcade Shop. I don't know about for this particular monitor. ArcadeShop.com sells them. Uh, Zanen Electronics, Z A N E N, Zanen Electronics sells them. There's a place called Arcade Parts and Repair. Uh, that guy's on KLOV a lot. He's, he stocks all kinds of arcade stuff, so he's got them all that money. Um, so you can get them around. They probably have them on eBay, too. Just depends on who you're ordering from. But while we were doing that, we found an interesting problem with this particular one. Now, remember on the screen that we had, and I did not even know that this was possible, but you saw that the uh, uh, screen, the flyback was turned up too bright, right? You could see the retrace lines in it and everything. Okay, so I want you to look at this. The front of the flyback, that's completely broken off. Let's see if I can get a, some light down there where you can see. So that's fun, but apparently it broke off in such a way that the damn thing still works 
It's just you can't adjust the brightness. It's stuck in a medium. It's stuck in a medium, people. So we're definitely going to replace that. So uh, I had to order a flyback. So you know what that's going to do? That's going to really slow down this repair video. But only for me. Not for you. Because I film all these way in advance. So by the time you see this video, I will have already got the flyback in. And waited the week or whatever that it takes. And then started working on it again. So in the magic of YouTube, I'm going to snap my fingers. And all of the time that I have to wait will pass. And my, my wonderful viewers will not have to wait on anything except my long-winded explanation. So here we go. Voila! Brand new flyback. Fleaback, if you might. We got it from ArcadeShop.com. Look at it down in there. It looks so pretty. Everything's uh, got a little bit of dirt on it, though, but that's all right. That just makes it play better. Or maybe not. Okay, so now we got to bolt it back onto the frame. Uh, we replaced all the electrolytic capacitors, replaced the flyback. Only thing we didn't replace was a few of these bigger ones uh, in the power in the uh, power section. So they're a little. Uh, you can get them. I mean, if you order them, we're just doing it with stuff that we have here. We didn't order it. I guess we could have ordered it when we ordered it. Damn it! I waited too long. <laughs> Usually, you don't need to replace those though, but we'll see. So we're going to put it back on the frame over here, and then we'll try it back in the cabinet and see what we got. Hopefully that'll get this one uh, up and running, and we can mess with the other one. All right, we got it all back together, ready to be tested again. Hopefully it'll have a nice, beautiful, bright picture that you can adjust the focus and the brightness on, since the knobs aren't popped off the flyback. So here's the flyback with the front piece broke off. Um... Which I guess just made it where the the brightness and the focus were kind of in some unadjustable position. And here's the piece that broke off. I mean, if you glued the damn thing back on, it probably would have worked. But then, you know, you just it's a ticking time bomb at that point, folks. It could have went back like that. So I'm going to throw this thing in the trash so Joey doesn't try to reuse it. I know you're trying to reuse this, Joey. Okay, folks, we put it back in the cabinet. We're going to test it. We're all plugged up. Hopefully it works out. We got a sound, but we don't have any image yet. Oh, I thought I saw something. Nope. I think we got to turn up the flyback. I had the wrong video line hooked up, so I swapped them again. Let's turn it on one more time. Okay, folks, it's kind of hard to see because it's so bright out right now. We got it right here in the front window, but uh, we got it back up. Uh, Joe, what was the problem with the deflection collapsing? Bad solder. Bad solder. So he did the cap kit. He put the new flyback back in it, and now it uh, it's deflecting properly. So we got that one in. What do you think? Looking pretty good. Okay, so now we're messing with the other one. So let's go check that out. That was the one that was sparking and making us think we were going to die. So we have pulled out the one that they rebuilt um, and have looked. And we can't find any bad solder. And we didn't notice any uh, caps that were in backwards or anything like that. Um, but we, we that snapping thing it was doing, it only did a couple times. So we're still watching that, trying to figure out what in the world that is. It's got a new flyback, though. Um, but so we're going to work through the power section. So Joe checked the B plus and it's at 75 volts. It should be 100 and 110, something like that. So we're definitely low. So what we're going to do is look on the schematics in the power section and then check each component going through and see if we can find something that 
ain't right up to about the voltage regulator. And hopefully it's something on, on that side of the power supply instead of, sometimes you can have something, like if the, if the B plus is supposed to be 120, the power section is working fine and it's making 120, but then it goes along and something is shorted farther along in the, in the board and that's drawing the power down. But hopefully it'll be something in the power supply isn't creating the right voltage because that's easier to find. So we'll see. So let's look at the schematics and see if we can uh, see if we can get a good idea of some things that we can check right there at the beginning of the uh, of the power supply. Okay, folks. So it's an XM eighteen oh one, a sharp XM eighteen oh one. So if you look on the schematics, the power comes in here, goes through this little transformer, goes through some diodes. This over here is probably the uh, decals coil. Yep. Or part of it is. Um, and it comes over here to test point 91. Test point 91 should be 110 volts. And right now it's 78 volts. So we got some problems. So the first thing I'm going to do is check all these caps to see if it, they look all right. And we're going to check all these little resistors. And then we're going to move over a little further into it and check this stuff. And then ultimately we have a power regulator here that it might be. So we gotta consider that too. But uh, I'm gonna check I'm gonna check all these resistors in this area and just look at all the capacitors, check these diodes to make sure everything's cool. Um, and then uh, we'll see if we can find anything that doesn't add up. So I printed out that section. Here's where the power comes in. Okay, and so I started checking. Now remember, we are getting some voltage. Way over here at test point 91, we're supposed to have 110, but we have 78. Okay, so I started looking through. It could be a thing where like maybe one side of something's missing or something, but everything's checking out. So what, the way I test this, this is like a a uh, little transformer. So you're just checking from here to here to see if there's continuity because the transformer is just a wire, you know, so there should be a connection from here to here and from here to here. And there were. So I put a little check. <laughs> then I come over here. When it comes up this way, what it's doing is that's the degauss coil. So that's really not that important unless it's shorted or something. But you see the power comes over here and then comes through this resistor. I checked it. That's fine. Notice too, see how it's a so I know it's a little blurry, but that's a, a one point, I think it said 1.5, and I think that's a 3 watt. Um, whenever there are a bigger wattage like this and they have an exclamation mark, usually that means that this is something that's um, prone to fail and it's important to uh, have working. So they're, they're calling your attention to this, this resistor um, because it needs to be pretty much on the money, and if something goes wrong, that might burn up. Okay. Sometimes too, it means that depending on the chassis, that'll be slightly different. Um, it'll it'll tell you that you know sometimes they'll have a little number beside it, and then down here at the bottom it'll say if it's a XM eighteen oh one, it should be this part. If it's an XM two thousand and one, it should be this part. But um, so that was fine. So then uh, it comes over here, right? And there's a couple big capacitors here that were not shorted. So I just checked to see if they were shorted together. They're not. And then there are four diodes, and those four diodes all passed power one way, but not the other way, like they should, with a voltage drop. Um, and then this capacitor wasn't shorted. Okay, a little check mark, check mark, check mark. So you're just working through, just do it systematically, straight through. Okay, these capacitors had been replaced in the cap kit, and were oriented the, the right way. So. If it was backwards, sometimes that will cause a problem. Well, always that will cause a problem, but that could do something like what we're seeing. But usually if that happens, the thing will blow up. The cap will literally explode. <laughs> um, and there was no exploded caps, and they looked like they were in there, right? And then this thing, I don't even know what it is, but it's like a, you can see that it's similar to a coil, too. There's a wire connecting between it. So I checked, and that was connected through. And this thing, this cap had been replaced and was in fine. This resistor was fine. Okay, this fuse was fine. So we're, now we're past our test point. This resistor was fine. Okay, this resistor was fine. 
Both of these diodes were fine. But then I get to this. This is an SCR. And it's an S6192F, which is this old obsolete SCR. Remember, this monitor is from the early 80s. So I tested it in circuit, and it ain't good. It's no bueno. And so I took it out of circuit, and it's still no bueno. Two of the legs are shorted together. And it does that no matter which side you grab it on, and then also there's no voltage drop between any of the legs, blah, blah, blah. I'm sure there's a, a better way to test it. You've got your anode and your cathode, and I guess that's the ground. Um, I don't even know which one's which on this, on this actual part, but if you look at the... Sometimes you can test them in circuit, and I believe this one you probably can. I took it out just because I didn't know for sure. So two of the legs were, were testing shorted together in circuit. So I was thinking, you know, this leg and this leg, the only way they're connected is through a capacitor and a resistor. So you shouldn't really be able to get any kind of connection on a meter in circuit through that. And then this leg and this... I mean, they're connected together through a cap, a resistor, a bunch of resistors, this uh, power regulator. So there's no way in hell you should be getting a reading between here and here. And then this goes over to the transformer, to the, uh, the uh, flyback. And then this goes up this way. It's not really connected to anything. So in circuit, just the way I can see it, it doesn't look like any of these should have any kind of uh, short in circuit. Now... If this cap was not here, so let's say that was gone, and that was just connected straight, and that was just how the circuit was designed. Now, they probably wouldn't design the circuit like this. I'm not an engineer, obviously, so I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. But I'm just saying, if you see something in a circuit where the SCR is installed like this, and there's a capacitor, uh, there's a resistor connecting two of the legs together, right, with just a resistor in the middle, well, if you measure in circuit between this one and this one, they'll be connected because there's just a resistor in between. So you can't check it in circuit. It'll it'll come up and say that it's got almost a dead short, which will be 330 ohms, which I guess isn't a dead short, but it's a short. Um, those two will be connected together in circuit. But since this capacitor is here, your meter would have to check through that resistor and then build up the voltage in this capacitor to, to have a connection. It just it, it, I think in circuit you can probably test it. So if you get one of these that ain't right, and the voltage is like in the 70s, it's probably this thing. Now, it could be other stuff, but this is our first step. So we're going to order these and uh, get them in, and then we'll pop one in. Reading online, just other people messing with them, it looks like this is a pretty common problem. So we got 78 volts on the B+, and this SCR is shorted. So I'll let you know what happens whenever uh, we get our new one in. Now, you'll have to, you won't have to wait, but I'm going to have to wait like three or four days probably. By the way, if you ever want to get parts like this, so you might say, where the hell do you get that? There's a couple places. So our favorite place, just because we've known them a long time, is Arcade CRT.com. Chad. We've known him a long time. And so Chad can fix any of these damn monitors. If, if you need this thing fixed and you can't fix it, if you send it to Chad, he'll fix it. Go to his website and check it out. But if you're trying to fix it yourself and you need weird parts like this, he's got most of them too. And they're on his uh, website. You can just order them. You don't even have to talk to them. And then there's another place. Arcade Parts. And repair.com. This guy's good too. I don't know this gentleman, um, but he, he posts on KLOV all the time. His website, he's got tons of stuff. So I think he's got this part too. So if you're looking for something and you can't get it from Chad, we just say to use him because we know Chad. We're buddies with him. But uh, this guy's good too. He gets all kinds of stuff, and he's probably got some stuff Chad doesn't even have. So. This, this guy is also approved, <laughs> right? So if you need some parts, check out these two guys. This gentleman doesn't do repairs, I don't think, on monitors. But this but Chad is like the man when it comes to doing repairs on monitors. He repairs all of them, and he pretty much just does uh, 
old ones. If you look on his service log where it's showing what he's working on now, basically people are sending him all of the super hard to repair monitors. All he's getting are, like if I mess around with this and I just can't figure it the hell out, eventually it'll end up at Chad and he'll figure it out. It's like that. That's how the guy's got it. So he's, he's fixing all of the super complex and tough to repair, like Mac Vision tri-sync monitors that are that have went bad in people's candy um, candy cab um, Japanese games and stuff. He's, he really knows his stuff. So that's where we order the part from whenever they come in. Oh, another thing. You can probably get this on eBay or AliExpress or something, but there's a serious problem with fakes in the electronics business, like the component business. Serious problem. I mean like a third of them are fake on some of this crap. So you really got to watch where you get them because you could easily get them, get them, get fake ones. And they're always a little cheaper. And uh, sometimes they look exactly the same, but what will happen is somebody will take something like a, uh, a tip one Oh two or something that's real common. And then they'll, they'll use a machine to take off the printing on it and then stamp it where it says S 6192 F with a little number below it, and hell, you can't tell the difference just by looking at it. It looks exactly the same, and it might even test the same if they if they use the right um, if they use the right type of component. It might have the same uh, NPN or PNP you know configuration. I don't. I guess this doesn't because it's a uh, ground anode cathode, but maybe. But anyway, if you if you were smart about it, you could even use something so similar that people couldn't even tell by testing it. And so there's no way in hell you can even know that it's fake. You have to cut it apart and look at the die or whatever. Um, so you really got to watch where you get this stuff. Um, because let's say I buy a fake one of those and I put it in and they've done a good job faking it to where it's just a, a very similar part but not the same part and it doesn't work. But it, it wires up the same or it, the legs are in the same um, uh, position. You put it in and you still have the same problem where the B plus is low. Well, now in my head, I'm thinking, well, it ain't that. I tried that, and then I'm moving around, and I'm looking for the problem, and I can't ever find it. But in reality, it's still that problem. I just put a fake part in. So it, it causes all kinds of freaking trouble. But if you get stuff from Chad, his stuff is tested because you know he's using them to test his... Uh, the, he's using them himself in, in things that he's fixing. So he, uh, he he has a way of figuring out that they're fake. This gentleman here, too, the best I can tell, he doesn't. He, I've never seen him sell fake stuff either. So he's got a way where he can source stuff that he he knows is legitimate. So you kind of got to watch where you you find out where you buy the stuff from. Um, if you just buy it from some random guy on eBay, it could be fake stuff from China. And then another thing, okay, so you go on eBay and the China part. So these things were like eleven dollars each for that SCR because it's an old uh, obsolete one okay so they're 11 bucks so let's say you go on on eBay or AliExpress and they've got them for a dollar right so you you know that's a fake damn part probably right so you go I'm not gonna buy that one hell you know the one from China's fake it's only a dollar okay so an American guy goes and says damn they're selling them for a dollar and this guy's selling them for 11 I'll just buy a bunch of these and I'll sell them for seven dollars and so he's got them for seven on eBay, and you see him, and you go, "Oh, look, it's a USA guy. That one's probably legit. Let me uh, let me buy some of those." Well, it's the same damn party. Just bought the cheap ones, and he's selling them just so that you don't think they're from China. So you gotta watch what you do, folks. Look, who's calling me? That's my brother Donnie. All right, folks. So that second monitor, we got all those parts in. Swapped out everything in the power supply section. Sh swapped out the uh, the uh, the oscillator IC. Swapped out everything we could. I mean, basically replaced everything, and still could not get the thing to work right. It it keeps coming up at like half voltage, seventy four volts or something like that. And so I look around online, and there's tons of people with that exact same problem, and nobody seems to know why the hell they do that. So. I don't know. So we, we messed with it, messed with it, messed with it. Then we, we talked to uh, Mike again, and he said, well, you know, I got another monitor. <laughs> what did, it, did, he, did he bring you one or two? Two. He brought, it brought us two more monitors. And so what have you done with this one, Joe? Just recapped it. So Joe uh, put a new cap kit in it. 
It's looking pretty good. I see some shiny caps down there. All right, we're going to slide it in, and uh, hopefully, we'll, uh, hopefully this one will come up for us. All right, we've got two working monitors now. But this monitor, the sound doesn't work. So i got to take it back out and work on the sound. Uh, but Joe did a cap kit on it, and it looks pretty good. So we've got two monitors that look good. This one, the sound doesn't work, and the board, one half of the board still doesn't work. So you only get video on one monitor, um, which is supposed to be this one. So this side's working, that side's not, although that side's monitor is primo. Okay, so uh, we, uh, we unhooked the plug for the, for the uh, speaker just to make sure that it had, uh, um, that the speaker was good. We heard it working on the other video, but kind of, yeah, right? Um, and it's getting, it's, it's like 8 ohms if you check resistance. Um, and, uh, but, so we've got an issue. Everything looks like it's plugged in right, but we don't have any audio. So I'm going to pull the monitor out, and we're going to uh, see if we can track down what that might be. Okay, we have taken it back apart, out of the game. Took the cover back off of it. And the audio is all handled in this corner section right here. All this is audio, okay? On just about any raster monitor, and again, these are a little different, and I'm not trying to say I'm some expert because obviously we just abandoned that other monitor, so we're going to send Mike back one that's like half fixed, <laughs> right? This is the third monitor. So we were having a problem up here with the power supply section of that one. Um, but on this... Uh, on uh, on most raster monitors, you will on the bottom they've got drawn in where the heat sinks are, and so you'll have two transistors that match each other usually on a lot of these, and those will be the deflection, um, the vertical deflection transistors, and then on this one there is another setup over here where you've got two heat sinks with two more transistors, and those are to amplify the sound. Now there's other transistors, but um, this whole section is sound. Okay. So this is a Sharp, a Sanyo, the way that they did it. This is what's in most of the, uh, like, Donkey Kongs and the upright Nintendos. They have this. This is the soundboard out of a Sanyo. So they actually had the, the monitor amplify the sound on a uh, Sanyo and on a Sharp. And that's just how Nintendo did it, because their boards didn't send out amplified sound. So in a lot of JAMA games, they have a... Uh, uh, a section with an amplifier up in the corner of the board and uh, it sends it out like that. On a Nintendo game it just sends out a sound signal that's unamplified. So it runs up to this board which has a transformer, the speaker plugs into it and it gets power and then uh, uh, it amplifies it. But if you look it's very it's a very similar design to what they're doing here. So they've got two heat sinks with two transistors, two heat sinks with two transistors and then you've got your uh, on a uh, Sanyo, you've got your transformer for the speaker. On this one, you have a transformer right there for the speaker. Um, it's just a very similar design. I'm just looking at it from the bottom because it's easier to get to everything. I'm going to get the schematics just so we can look at it real quick. But the first, I, I think I see the problem. Um, there is a cap right here. See it? That cap didn't quite get on the trace like it should. So we got to repair that one cap, and that'll probably do it. It's the one that's coming off of Q302. So I'm going to look in the schematics and see what that does, and maybe we can tell for sure that that's what would, would have killed it. I'm, I'm sure that's it. I can see it. You can't see it that good because of the camera, but see it? It's not attached. C302, Batman. Here are the schematics. Here is that area. Speaker, the transformer, right? So if you look, the sound plugs in here. Simple little connector. And then it comes up chia, up this way. It runs through 301. So if you have a problem with that, you could lose all of your sound. And then it runs into this one transistor here. And 302 is just on the other side of that on the collector, so it it um, you can just check out the circuit here. 
that cap not being in there would definitely cause issues. Right? And then uh, it comes up to here, runs out through the, trans the transformer and up into the speaker. So we're going to solder it back on and see what happens. Okay, folks, let's try it again. Voila. So it's on free play, and this is the side that has Excite Bike in it. And this is the side that has Mario Brothers in it. So uh, we're in a situation where the board is sending out a signal to one side, but it isn't sitting out to the other side. So we need to do the board repair. So we will do that on the next video. What do you think about that? So leave your comments below. We've still got that other monitor that uh, we can't figure out the power supply section that we'll give back to Mike. We'll tell him what's going on with it. But uh, we've got two up and running monitors, so that's good. You probably want to see it, don't you? What the? I guess I'm sitting on the button so it won't do it. We'll get it. <laughs> but we've got it up and running at least. Got the monitors going. We'll work on that next time. But uh, leave your comments below. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it. And by the way, thank you to everybody that's been using our Amazon links. If you don't know about that, there are links below to Amazon.com. And if you're planning on buying anything on there, if you click one of our links before you do that in different, there's different countries and everything, uh, it gives us a little piece of what you spend on Amazon. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. Uh, people have been on there buying all kinds of stuff. I mentioned it the other day. I think somebody bought a trampoline. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so people have been buying all kinds of stuff. Thank you for that. And uh, also, check out my brother, Donnie. That is literally my brother, Donnie. Um, he has his own channel here on YouTube that I'm over there on a lot. We're, it has nothing to do with arcade games and pinball machines, but we're always working on... Uh, we're always uh, working on cars and trucks, and he's working on the farm and on tractors and moving hay and blowing up the clutch in his truck and the transmission because he put too much hay on the trailer and then rebuilding the trailer. And then we're working on um, this old grocery store that we bought. So a little tiny one, though. Not a big one. We're not rich like that. But we did buy a little tiny grocery store that we're, uh, we're fixing up. So we've been filming all of that. So... Uh, Go check that all out if you want to see more great, wonderful content like this. And uh, <laughs> leave your comments below. Give us a thumbs up, and we'll see you on the next video.